Hi gang, I'm back again. This is page two. So for page two, you're going to evaluate an angle without a calculator. And in order to do that, you're going to need a set of tools. So the set of tools that we talked about in lecture was having two standard triangles and the unit circle. The first triangle, 30, 60, 90, we can use this one anytime we're trying to take the six trig functions and evaluate a 30 or a 60 angle. The second triangle, anytime we use the six trig functions, we can evaluate a 45 degree angle. So again, these two triangles are very good at evaluating a 30, a 45, or a 60 degree uh, angle. Down here is the unit circle, and this is good. Uh, this is a good tool to use when you're evaluating a quadrantal angle. A quadrantal angle is an angle that falls on one of the axes, right? So if it falls here at zero, or at pi over two, or at pi, or three pi over two, and on and on. You could also count the rotations in that, like three pi, or five pi, or seven pi over two. So how we use this is the uh, first output is whenever you're trying to take the cosine of an angle, that's the first output. Whenever you're trying to take the sine of an angle, that's the second output. So meaning the cosine of zero is one and the sine of zero is zero. Meaning the cosine of pi over two is zero, the sine of pi over two is one, right? That's how we use this tool. And then the other thing we'll look at is the six uh, trig functions and their relationships to the side on the uh, sides of the triangle. So for instance, Sakato uh, is a nice mnemonic to remember the relationship between the angles to the sides. So for instance, the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. That's where you're getting the OH. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. The TOA is the opposite over the adjacent. Right, so then you can also do the inverses of, uh, sorry, you can also do the reciprocal of these. So the reciprocal of sine would be the cosecant, which would be the flip of this. I didn't write the whole thing out, right? I should have an angle in there. I'm just writing it really basic for you. The uh, reciprocal of this is the secant, which is, you'd flip that. And then the tangent is a cotangent. And you'd flip this. Right, this is a cosine, this is a sine. So those are the relationships of the angle to the sides given the trig functions. The other thing you have to be really careful about is when you are evaluating angles, is the opposite and the adjacent side change depending on where you're standing at the triangle. So like for instance, if I'm at 60 degrees, Radical three is opposite to me. One is adjacent to me because this is across from me and this is next to me. So if I'm at 60, this would be opposite. This would be adjacent. But, but if I'm at 30, this would be opposite to me. One would be opposite to me. Radical three would be adjacent. So it's really critical that you understand that the opposite and the adjacent is totally dependent on where you are standing at, on the triangle, okay? Uh, and when you're across from the 90 degree angle, that's always the hypotenuse. The other two sides are called legs. I know you guys watched the lecture, so you're good on that. I just repeat it to help you. All right, so here we go. Let's start evaluating. So sine of 30, that's gonna be your opposite over your hypotenuse. So I go to my 30 degrees, opposite of 30 is one, and uh, hypotenuse is two. So opposite over the hypotenuse. So it's one over two. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So I go to my 60 degrees, I stand at 60 degrees. Adjacent always touches the angle. So if you get a little confused, just remember, adjacent touches the angle, opposite is far away, it's on the other side of the angle. All right, so adjacent to 60 is one, uh, and the hypotenuse, again, is two. So this has the same answer, it's going to be one half. Okay, tangent, that's the opposite over the adjacent. So now I'm at 45 degrees, so I go to this triangle, it doesn't matter which 45 you pick, they're both the same, so don't worry, like don't worry about it, okay? So if I stand here and I look for the opposite, so this would be opposite, this would be adjacent to me, so it's one over one, which is one. 
Okay, now secant of pi. So we have two things we have to discuss here. First of all, it's pi. So you have to know which tool to use when you have pi. Pi is a quadrantal angle because it falls on one of the axes. And a good tool for that, again, as we discussed, is a unit circle, right? You see pi here on the unit circle, which means we can use this tool. The only thing is, is that, as I said earlier, the unit circle is based off of cosine and sine. So anytime you get a trig function that isn't strictly cosine or sine, sorry, let me say that better. Anytime you get a trig function that is not cosine or sine, you want to be able to use cosine or sine or both, depending on what it is. Like if you have a tangent function, you're going to have to use sine and cos on the unit circle. All right, so I'm going to come over here. So I have to convert the secant because I don't have a secant on the circle. I have a cos or a sine. So we're going to use the reciprocal identity of 1 over cosine of pi. And now I can use the unit circle because I know the cosine of pi off the unit circle. So I come over here to pi. Remember, the first value, the, what we consider the x, is always the cosine, the output of the cosine. The second value is the output of the sine, okay? So at pi, the cosine of pi is negative 1, the sine of pi is 0. So the value I'm looking for here is this negative 1. So let me come back over here. And we're going to get 1 over negative 1, so the answer is negative 1. Okay, we're going to keep rattling these off. Cotangent of pi over 6. Cotangent is going to be the adjacent over the opposite. Now we have to go to an angle of pi over 6. Pi over 6 as a radian is equivalent to 30 degrees. So that means we go over to 30 degrees and we need the adjacent over the opposite. So we're going to need radical 3 over 1. And we can just rewrite that as radical 3. Okay, cosecant, that is going to be the hypotenuse over the opposite. Pi over 3, this is why it's good to know how to convert your angles, because you have to be able to know, oh, pi over 3, I, convert that, I can multiply that by uh, 180 over pi, and that'll convert it to 60 degrees. So pi over 3 is 60 degrees, so I'm at 60 degrees. We said we needed the hypotenuse and the opposite. So at 60 degrees, we need the hypotenuse, and we need the opposite. So it's the hypotenuse, which is a 2, over the opposite, which is a radical 3. And if you would like, you can rationalize this. To rationalize this, you'd multiply up down by radical 3. You'd get 2 radical 3 over 3, and that would be the rationalized ratio of the sides. Okay, gang, so just a quick review of this. So when you're going to evaluate... Uh, angles without a calculator. There are a couple different tools you can use. The tools that I showed you was the 30, 60, 90 triangle. This triangle will help you. Any of the six, six trig functions, you can calculate 30 degrees. Any of the six trig functions, you could calculate 60 degrees. So you could do sine of 60, cosine of 60, tangent of 60, cotangent of 60, secant of 60, cosecant of 60, right? It, you can do all the trig functions off of each of these angles. And same here, you can do all, the, you can evaluate all the six trig functions off of your 45. And then this one again was for the quadrantal angle. So if you have something like a zero, a pi over two, a seven pi, and a nine pi over two, any of your whole pies or fractional pies, you can use the unit circle. And we talked about Sakatoa. Okay, guys, so that's it on this one. Um, there's one more page. I'm almost at nine minutes. And I'm talking like a bandit. I hope I hope you're with me. I bet you are. Okay, so here we here we go. Let's rattle this one off. It's very similar to what we just did, so we'll be able to, to do this one quickly. All right, so here's your two legs of the triangle. You're missing the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is across from the 90 degrees. So this is the guy we're missing. Um, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to find it. So we're going to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we're going to do 6 squared plus 8 squared equals to c squared. 36 plus 64 equals to c squared. That adds to 100. Now this is c squared, which means you have to take the square root. Usually when we take a square root, we put a... <clears throat> Usually when we take a square root, we put a plus or a minus, but because this application is referring to a magnitude, 
you want to just take the positive, okay? Because it's it's a it's a you're looking at a magnitude. Okay, so now we've got that this is 10. And and we know where our angle is. Our angle is here. We just we just have one angle in this triangle that we're looking at. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make and say what each thing is. So this eight is across, so this is my opposite. My uh, six is touching, so this is my adjacent, and we know this one is my hypotenuse. And now we'll just go through what we just did. We can do this a little quicker because now we, we've practiced this. So cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So for this triangle, it's six over 10, reduces to three over five. Okay, sine of this triangle, that's your opposite over your hypotenuse. So I come over here, o opposite is eight, over 10, so this is eight over 10. So this is gonna to reduce to be, if we take a two from each side, four fifths. Okay, tangent is opposite over adjacent. We come over to our triangle. We want the opposite over the adjacent. That's eight over six. That reduces to four over three. Cotangent, that's gonna be your adjacent over your opposite. So we come out of the triangle. Adjacent is six, opposite is eight. Okay, cosecant, that's your hypotenuse over your opposite. So hypotenuse is 10, opposite is six. Sorry, hypotenuse is 10, opposite is eight. Woo, caught that one. Um, uh, five over four, my brain was jumping ahead. I was doing the hypotenuse over the adjacent. I gotta, I gotta wait my turn in the queue here. Okay, I gotta cool my jets. All right, so here we're on this one. So secant, that's the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So that's 10 over six, which is five over three. Okay, gang, so I hope you're getting um, the point that we're doing. We're doing the angle in relationship to its sides. You have to be clear on who's opposite of your angle, who's adjacent to your angle. It's really critical that you understand that opposite and adjacent is totally dependent on where you're standing on the triangle where your angle is. Okay, so make sure um, you get down your Sakatoa, you know your six trig functions and, and what they stand for. All right, gang, I think that's it on this one. I'm gonna finish this up. I can see I'm heading towards 13 minutes. So hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you in another video. Bye-bye.